Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by The Mosaic Company. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soil School. It's our final episode for the 2023 season, and today we're going to focus on extreme weather and how our soil health can impact water holding capacity in those drought years. Uh, For that conversation, I'm joined by University of Minnesota Soil Extension Specialist, Anna Cates. She's been working on this question for the past three years. Hi, Anna. Hey, thanks for joining me on the Soil School. Good morning, Bernard. Thanks for having me. Hey, let's let's start uh, with you know how you define a good soil health system. You know what practices contribute to healthy soil. Well, we want to think about practices that follow the soil health principles of reducing disturbance, keeping a living root in the ground, diversifying the systems. I work mostly in row crop systems. So the way we do that when we're mostly growing corn and soybean is cash grain crops is we add cover crops. We add a third crop in rotation and we reduce tillage from full width, disc gripper, chisel plow type systems to strip till or no till situations. Mm-hmm. Now, Anna, how, how do these soils in, in these systems compare, you know, to those more, you know, conventional managed with with tillage, for example? It's kind of a matter of letting the biology and the system do some of the work for you. So instead of doing tillage to create pores and fluff up the soil for planting, you use roots to create pores and you let the biology and the system mineralize nutrients and live in those pores and and, uh, structure that you provide. So tillage can give you a really nice seed bed, uh, but it can collapse as you get rain throughout the season. And so the uh, biologically built soil structure, if it's not disturbed, can be preserved for a little longer. Now, for, for the last three years, you've been researching, you know, you know, quote, how soil health systems hold water in drought years, you know, basically, simply, I guess, is, is how do they do it, you know, especially in a dry year, you know, under drought conditions, and, and, and what characteristics of those healthy soils allow them to have, you know, higher water holding capacity? Well, I have to say, I didn't start out trying to research the drought years. Uh, that just was a happy accident when I started out trying to research wet years because my first couple of years in Minnesota were really wet. And we set up an experiment to look at uh, the response to rain in the system. But instead, we ended up looking at uh, the system in these drought years. And the way that soil can hold more water is by having more small pores, essentially. So that's why clay soils are really good at holding water, because they have a lot of small pores. But the other function we want in soil is for water to enter, right? We need big pores for water to enter and to get down deeper in the profile. We don't want to hold all of our water in just the top six inches or 10 centimeters. We want to get deeper. So you need both kinds of pores. And when you have good soil structure and soil aggregation, then you have both big and small pores. So talk about, I guess, um, some of your research, Anna, and, and that is, you know, um, we, we've got uh, water in the soil profile, and depending on the soil, um, you know, it's, it's in different parts of, of the profile and, and at different depths. So what do you see there? Yeah, so we've had soil moisture probes monitoring moisture from, you know, 10 centimeters down to a meter at a lot of paired on-farm sites for the last few years. So that means uh, when I say a paired site, I mean that we looked for farmers who had at least five years of using these soil health systems compared to farmers who had at least five years similar soil type of using more conventional practices like I described with full width tillage. And so we were able to look at the total water in the profile and we found that at the surface things tend to be pretty similar and also just very noisy. You know, the surface responds to every rain event. Uh, But as you get deeper in the profile, you see more consistent increases in water in the profile in a soil health system. So that means that either more water is getting down via infiltration through those big pores, which we also found some evidence for. We found evidence that there were more big pores in the soil health systems. So again, you've got to have that first kind of pore, the big ones, to get the water in, and then you've got to have those smaller pores inside the aggregates to keep the water around. So that, I guess, leads to my next question is, you know, how can we manage the land to, uh, to affect how water moves across the landscape and through the soil? Right. Well, that per- first part, water moving across the landscape, isn't something we specifically looked at, but it has to do simply with the surface surface characteristics, right? There's where you are on the topography. Are you on the top of the hill, the slope, or the toe slope, the, the, the lowlands? Uh, and then there's the roughness, the surface roughness. And so a total no-till system, if you don't have a lot of residue or vertical 
living cover crop on the surface can actually let a lot of water run off. Um, you need something, and if you have in a snowy system, which I guess you guys are as well as us, uh, then you need something vertical to catch that snow. So a, a choppy surf surface with something vertical can catch the water initially. What about cover crops here? Um, and I mean, obviously, um, sometimes, you know, they, they take a lot of water in, but they use a lot yeah. of water too. It's a push-pull on the system. It really is. You know, obviously they take up water. They're a growing plant. So they take up water, especially in the spring, assuming it, an overwintering cover crop. In our area, it doesn't get a lot of growth in the fall. If you have fast growth in the fall, you'll get a lot of water uptake then. Uh, you'll get some water uptake in the spring with a slow-growing one. In our climate, fall and spring are our wettest times of year. So that's actually a great time for a cover crop to be taking up water. And then what we hope is that over the summer when we get a little less rain, the roots that were there and the residue on the surface reduce evaporation and build that soil structure. Because roots actually tie up those soil aggregates and build the soil structure physically. Hey, I want to ask you, and you've got this great slide here about microbial glues and, uh, and how those work and how they contribute. Yeah, you know, we talk a lot about the microbiome, and sometimes microbes mostly get credit for nutrient cycling, right? Which they do. They're important for that. But they're also important for building soil structure. Particles in the soil are held together by organic matter. Sometimes I think of it as a snowball, like you could have one big chunk of organic matter in the middle and the sticky uh, residue around that, which when I say residue in this case, I'm not talking about leaves. I'm talking about sloughed off microbial cells, dead bits of microbes that are apparently pretty sticky, and they hold the clay particles together and hold the aggregates together. So that's what I mean by the sticky carbon coated microbial residues can really hold the soil together. Hey, final question for you. And that is, you know, um, about rain events. Um, we do see, you know, rain that tends to be heavier um, and more intense. Um, it, yeah. You know, uh, sort of, you know, uh, anecdotally, shall we say, and, and, and generally, you know, how does a soil's health impact the ability to, to respond to rain? Yeah. Uh, so we did, like I said, we set up this study to try to understand the effect of rain events. So how much water is captured in a rain and how do the aggregates respond? So are they resilient or do they dissolve if you get a big rain? And we found that in the soil health systems, we had those more resilient aggregates that didn't dissolve when you got a big rain, which means that they're ready for the next rain to again absorb water and they're holding water for this rain. And when an aggregate completely dissolves, then you have all those fine particles filling in the pores that would otherwise conduct water to deeper depths. So we really want our aggregates to be resilient to those rain events. Mm -hmm. And then we also did see subsequently more water capture in those soil health events. Like I said, I, I wish we'd done this in some wetter years, and instead we got this, mm -hmm. this dry year phenomenon. But we had enough rains to be able to say, yes, something is different about the response of the systems. Mm -hmm. The soil health systems capture more water and have those stronger aggregates. Uh, any final thoughts for farmers watching, uh, Anna? I mean, uh, I mean, obviously, we have a range of tillage. We have a range of environments that, that dictate managing soils in different ways. You know, any takeaways from your, from your work? I have a friend who works in southern Minnesota who says the best time to observe soil health in your field is in the middle of a rainstorm. So if you're driving home in the rain and you've got your boots in the truck, go see what's happening. Go see whether the, soil, the water's going in or whether it's not. And that'll tell you whether your soil is healthy enough to respond to the, the rain you're getting. Recently, the last few years, every drop has been precious to us. So we don't want to miss out on water just sitting on the surface and evaporating. Well, Anna, hey, great stuff. Really appreciate you uh, making some time for Soil School. Uh, we'll catch you down the road. Great. Have a good one.